that said, we are going to get the teams up on screen. We are watching it from Jamie's point of view, kind enough to record it for us. Uh, so I think it's fair to say his team's got some fun stuff on it. Uh, I mean, it depends what your definition of fun is here, Adam. The top Pokemon up there for Jamie is Chansey, followed up by Dracozol, Excadrill, Lapras, Rillaboom, and Volcarona. So, yes, there are some very spicy Pokemon on there. He's got a really good kind of fire, water, grass core there with Lapras, Rillaboom, Volcarona. Having an electric type of Dracozol could be so powerful as well. And that's a Pokemon that he has really championed throughout the sort of 2020 season so far. Um, often pairing it with a Life Orb, though, so the Assault Vest could be a secret tech. But when you look at Adam's side here with the Togekiss, Kiss, Rillaboom, Dragapult, Arcanine, Duraludon, and the Dracovish. Again, some really big, heavy hitters in that team as well. You know, Dracovish, Dragapult, Rillaboom are all really well known for dealing out really big, heavy attacks. And then you've got the more supportive Pokemon, like Togekiss there. Um, Arcanine could do some really cool shenanigans with things like Will-O-Wisp and Snarl. Duraludon's the one I definitely watch out for, though. It, it kind of sometimes gets a little bit of sort of heat from people saying it's actually not a very good Pokemon, but I feel like Duraludon with its typing and its move pool and obviously not being really worried about taking an Intimidate can be a really good Pokemon choice. Yeah, and I, I, I think one thing that, you know, we have to talk about is the way that we obviously got to see the way Jamie picked his team. Mm -hmm. um, that lead look, looks, you know, if you manage to set up properly, that's going to be an issue to, to kind of deal with and get through. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to have the quickest, most explosive start. I mean, in our previous round today, we saw a, a very explosive start to game number one. And I, I just don't know if we're going to get that from uh, from this one. Uh, we'll see exactly <laughs> where we go. But but Lapras and Chansey together uh, against the Rillaboom and Togekiss. Rillaboom, obviously, Series 5 has been Rillaboom's time to shine. Uh, we'll see if it can put in the performance a lot of people have been relying on it for already. Exactly. Chansey there being well known as kind of a disruptive, bulky Pokemon that likes to sit itself out for the whole game. But Lapras is another Pokemon that enables this type of situation to happen. Um, if it goes for um, its elusive G-Max move, it's going to be able to set up the Aurora Veil, which will then give it even more defensive bulk. But no Dynamax in this turn one. or Spear coming out here from the Togekiss. Really, really interesting tech going into the Chansey there. That really could help out against certain matchups as Lapras goes for Sing going straight into that Rillaboom, going to be putting it to sleep. I mean, Sleep Tactics is something Jamie Boy is really well known for, and I think every team he's built in this format so far will always have some component to it. Throat Spray there on the Lapras as well, really, really nice, boosting up the special attack going forward after using the Sing move there and putting a Pokemon to sleep. Yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous, to be quite <laughs> honest with you. I mean, I'm just going to open and say it. Uh, Chansey was, as we can see, going for gravity, uh, trying to make sure that everything, everything hits exactly as you want it. Uh, and, you know, you can't even deal with anything in the air either. Um, and then Sing lands, the Rillaboom, I think makes the smart call here. Mm -hmm. um, I think Rillaboom does a good job of saying, oh, I'm not like familiar with how Chansey's going to operate. Chansey's kind of the, the mystery in the equation. So to turn around and be like, oh, I want Chansey to, to not do anything this turn. Like I'll find out what it's doing a turn mm -hmm. later. Pretty smart if you ask me. Uh, but falling asleep with Sing, not ideal. Um, we're gonna, you know, see exactly how he responds to that. Adam, yeah, you don't want to leave that little boom in to just, to just take it. Yeah, exactly. Duraludon gonna switch in now, and the first Dynamax of the set is going up here. Um, it looks like it's going up there on Adam's side. Gonna be um, the Togekiss on his side of the field. Again, a Pokemon really well known for dealing out some really big critical hits, and that could be what um, Adam needs to be able to start applying a lot of pressure to Jamie's team. Um, we know that the Slapras can now threaten um, offensively as well with some ice type moves into that slot. But Togekiss going for the max knuckle here, going to go into that chance. But as you can see, it's really not dealing as much damage as it needs to be doing. The attack boost isn't going to be helping out. It's based off a special attack move. Um, so it's not going to be increasing in strength as the turns go. With Chansey finally able to go for that gravity, going to bring all the Pokemon down um, onto the terrain. As Lapras goes for Blizzard as well. So the gravity helping out the effect, the accuracy of this move goes straight into the Duraludon, revealing that it's got the Focus Sash that's some excellent information for the rest of the set and deals a good chunk to a Dynamax Togekiss. I mean, that's definitely a really interesting strategy here from Jamie. He knows what he wants to be doing and you've got to see if Adam's able to play around this gravity here. Yeah, I mean, the gravity, I don't think, is, is being used for kind of all of its uses. I think what's interesting here, though, is the way that Jamie's played. You know, the way we've seen it is obviously the Gigantamax Lapras for the past however long, you know, it's been kind of coming to the to the front, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he's not even, 
Gigantamaxing it right now. Because he has the gravity boost, those moves that you're always worried about missing, like the Blizzard, you don't even have to worry about them right now. So he's able to kind of keep it there, save his Dynamax for something a little bit later, and, and go from there. That said, and he's weathering the storm really, really well. We do see this Chansey uh, taking hits really well, and yeah, a fighting move is great, but special attacks, uh, not, not usually the way to go when we see Adam changing up that strategy in this turn. Exactly, yeah. Special attacks, not always the best to target into a Chansey with, but doubling up into the Lapras removes the threat of the Lapras, but Chansey there going for a sting of his own to double sting here on Jamie's side. It's a really clear strategy, and if you don't have a way to change things up, um, you're going to be put to sleep. And I think it's interesting, actually, that the Togekiss wasn't going for something like a Max Starfall in the situation, bringing around um, the Misty Terrain so that you will not be affected by any kind of status afflictions could have been a really good strategy for him, and maybe that could be an adjustment to make the game too. But Volcarona here coming in. Volcarona springing any of these non-accurate moves to mind, Adam? Uh, that's been many options on Volcarona. I think we're going to see it at Quiver Dance uh, first. Obviously, Heat Wave is the, the preferred attack. Um, but, you know, right now, with things falling asleep and, and Adam forced to switch and play safe, you've got the perfect chance to, to set up your Quiver Dance. Um, and I really don't see an immediate answer to the Volcarona over on Adam's side of the field. I mean, we've now seen him rotate through, uh, you know, a number of his Pokemon. And with all four of those Pokemon revealed, you know that there's no Dracovish on that side. So mm -hmm. once you know the Dracovish isn't there, the Volcarona probably feels really, really good. You know, there's not gonna be any water type attacks heading towards it. There doesn't look to be the threat of a rock side coming in either. And uh, you know, all this switching forced by those things, chancey has got time to, to be particularly annoying uh, with the <laughs> life view. Something you guys may be familiar with from, from your max raid battles. Uh, yes. <laughs> Very uh, true. <laughs> you know, it's not something we usually see in competitive. And, and, you know, he's buying time, he's got things falling asleep. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's managed to weather the storm of a, a Dynamax Tobikis. I mean, that's one of the things we were saying about Boyd beforehand, is it's not something you would usually see, but if it's got a niche pick in his team, he's going to be able to put it in. And it's not something you can predict. You know, you look around the meta, I know we're still early on in Season 5, but it's quite hard to sometimes scout out this early but you might try and cover all the main bases right from the main archetypes but you would not be prepared for this chancy jamie late in this game one going for his dynamax here both his pokemon at very respectable health so it's definitely an optimal time to click that dynamax button and goes for the volcarona here so this volcarona is boosted up it's going to be dealing out some really powerful attacks while with the help of that chancy putting things to sleep yeah i mean the chancy is going to be able to kind of control the board uh, right now and, and do the best it can to, to keep things asleep and keep things from, from firing back. And while it does that, you know, after the Quiver Dance, there's really not much that can withstand the offensive prowess of the Volcarona. We see it there, comfortably mm -hmm. dealing with the Togekiss. And, you know, it really limits your options. Don't forget, the other Pokemon in the back are sleeping as well, so they're going to have to come in and, and deal with that. Chansey, though, not messing around, just going to say, you know what, I really like your strategy. I'm really comfortable putting all your things to sleep. And uh, now it's our command's turn. So this Volcarona is <laughs> in absolutely peak condition. We see kind of Jamie's strategy coming to the fore perfectly. You've got a Pokemon next to Chansey that boosts using either Throat Spray, Quiver Dance. I'm sure there's other options on this team that we haven't seen yet. And then you Dynamax it, and then you kind of sweep the ball. Uh, so, you know, Chansey drawing a lot of attention, but sometimes, you know, not, not the right time to be drawing that that attention away. Yeah, I'm bringing in Rillaboom here while facing down against the Volcarona is definitely not in the optimal situation here for Adam. Um, I mean, like you said there with Jamie, he's really got the ball position where he wants it. He's got a speedy, powerful Dynamax Volcarona, and I think it was very clever of him actually to preserve his Dynamax for later on in the game, let Adam go through his Dynamax turns, try wasting some of them with some sleep spam as well. And then when you're in a position where you can freely Dynamax, you can deal out um, max moves without having to worry that they're going to go into a max guard or go into a boosted HP Pokemon, for example. You can really utilize them to their sort of fullest extent. Um, Arcanine here, just going to be taking a little bit of a nap as Volcarona goes for another max flare. Yep, I mean, why not? You've got the Gorilla Boom right in front of you. Uh, you've already maxed flared once, so you've got access to the, uh, you know, the sun. Why not, mm -hmm. right? There's absolutely yeah. no reason not to, and I think this is kind of going to be a nice clean up i guess for jamie you know he's got one more turn of the dynamax uh doesn't really need to to worry about anything on this turn you know the arcanine is asleep the gravity is returned to normal so that's something i mean that's finally ended uh but at the current moment you know max moves don't miss you don't need to worry about that maybe he wants to reset it up if he wants to you know force some things to sleep 
Uh, but Duraliodon and Arcanine, probably not the answers you want to Volcarona. Yeah, exactly. Even without the gravity, Volcarona seems to be in a good position here, but why not if you've got that chance? Seed? Sing is one of those moves that really does need gravity. The odds are really not in your favor to be able to hit Sing without getting gravity up. So it's a worse decision there from Jamie to just go for that. Make sure you're really securing up this game one. Um, but if you're Adam, Arcanine particularly having a little nap here as well buys you some time to start thinking towards game two and how you're going to change things up. Max Flare coming straight out into that Duraludon easily picks up the KO there against the Pokemon and returns right back into its Pokeball, um, leaving sort of Arcanine against the world here as Chansey does indeed go for that gravity, just setting up to make sure that Arcanine can go right back to sleep if it decides to wake up. Yeah, I mean, the Arcanine, is, it, you know, can resist the Volcarona. That's something, right? And I think Arcanine could be kind of key to the strategy here. But uh, unfortunately, the Volcarona is boosted up with Quiver Dance, and uh, there's only so much you can do, especially when you're going to be constantly put to sleep. I think what would be interesting is if he could maybe force somehow, uh, you know, the final reveal uh, of the Pokemon from Jamie, get a little more insight into what he's doing with this strategy. Uh, but it looks like Volcarona and Chansey, just as a partnership, are going to clean up. The Arcanine so much damage from the Heat Wave in the sun after the Quiver Dance. Uh, and Chansey just says, no, I'm not, not even going to give you another chance to play the game. Uh, one more Sing lands, and uh, Jamie, you know, executing his strategy absolutely perfectly. Yeah, that's the other thing as well about Gravity. You don't have to worry about any Heat Wave misses. And all those little tiny 10%, 5% of not 100% accuracy, that was a really poorly way of putting it. Um, but anything that's not 100% accuracy, even a tiny bit, will always put that fear of doubt into your mind. We've seen previously in VGC so many games that are won or lost, depending on the accuracy of moves rather than sort of their effectiveness. Um, and I think being able to make sure that you have gravity in play the whole time here really does help Jamie alleviate that worry from his team. He's able to really confidently click moves like saying Heat Wave Blizzard because he knows they're going to be able to connect um, or have increased odds to connect. And I just, I feel like that's a really strong and bold strategy to be going for here. And if you're Adam, you have to know that he's going to be able to do this. Yeah, I mean, you've got to, you've got to find an answer. And I think you've got to find it quickly. Uh, the problem is, you know, we kind of saw his attempts there in game one. How do I deal with this this chancy? And unless you have a physical fighting attacker on your team, you're, you're probably going to struggle. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that said, they're not the most common anymore. You know, back in kind of series two, series three, we had a lot of Conkelders. Yeah. I think Conkelders dropped off a little bit now. I think, you know, we're not seeing as much of it. It's definitely fallen a little bit down the pecking order with some of the new tools that we've got access to. Mm -hmm. So maybe this Chansey is something that more people are going to have to think about. It's always been one of those Pokemon. You know, we see it with the Eviolite. It's very difficult to deal with. If you don't have an answer to it, there's no reason for Jamie just not to bring it every game. I would be interested to see the Dragapult, potentially. I think Dragapult could be interesting here. Um, just because it's so fast, it's so aggressive. Um, you know, and you've got to be you've got to be tempted by that Dracovish as well. Mm -hmm. I saw the Volcarona go running rampant through your team if you can find that perfect window where you've got dracovish versus volcarona and you can go first that would be ideal yeah i agree dracovish would be a really nice adjustment here for game two and i think as well using togekiss if you want to dynamax that pokemon again to maybe try and set up misty terrain using max starfall could be optimal here in order to just overwrite the terrain make sure that your pokemon aren't going to be going to sleep i mean the problem is with togekiss being a flying type you would still be affected but not if gravity is in effect you'd be pulled right down onto the terrain so then you'd be able to get the benefits of being in misty terrain as well um, and not be taking any naps so that might be a strategy that adam needs to go for but he's got to be able to find a way to work around the sleep and also be able to pick up ko's defensive plays are, are wonderful as part of the game but if you're not actually applying any offensive pressure you're not going to be picking up ko's and you're not going to be able to win the game Leads coming out here from Jamie, going to be Chansey and Volcarona, whereas Adam has gone for the Duraludon and the Togekiss once again leading out for him. Yeah, I actually, I, I think this Togekiss does make an interesting point that you brought up, is if he's going to gravity and you know it, then the terrain does become a little more important, right? Everything, including your Togekiss, is going to be on that terrain. Yes, of course, we, we know, we have the luxury of knowing that Volcarona does have access to change that terrain after a Dynamaxes. But, you know, if Sing was such a problem in the last game, try as best you can to get that Misty terrain up and, and keep yourself safe from at least that side of Jamie's strategy. Then you're kind of halfway to, to dealing with it. Uh, we're going to see a different uh, Ooh. in this game. I like seeing this. Uh, G-Max Duraludon. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this goes for G-Max Depletion. 
um, which will it lowers sort of the PP of the moves of your Pokemon if it goes for it. Um, so that will be interesting to see if that has any effect on the battle. Volcarona here going for the um, Quiver Dance here again, getting itself boosted up. Going to have to take the Air Slash from the Togekiss. You can see how much damage that does. Uh, but it does still manage to get its boost up, followed up by a Max Lightning. Again, this is a good strategy, doesn't get the KO, but it will set the electric terrain, meaning any Pokemon on that terrain will not be put to sleep. So that will help out the Duraludon from any Sing spam coming its way. Chansey, however, just going to go for the Life Dew here, so very nice Volcarona um, is able to hang on oh. here so it can wreak the benefits as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it gets a little bit of health back. That said, I mean, yes, Quiver Dance is up now and it's going to be going very, very quickly. Um, but if Togekiss can weave in another, you know, another really big attack, it could be in a, a great position. It looks like Jamie sees that threat and mm -hmm. is going to try and deal with that. But I do like the adaptation. We talked a lot about Misty Terrain. We, of course, didn't talk about Electric Terrain, which Jaladon definitely has access to. It. And I think Jamie kind of read that one very well, knowing that Terrain would be a bigger part of this battle saying, you know what, I'm going to respond to it in advance. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to bother with the gravity this turn. I don't, you don't need it as much with the, with the Volcarona. Uh, and knowing about that, playing around it, I think it's, it's very wise from him. That said, I mean, your Dynamax Pokemon Dynamax at about, mm, let's say, 30-40% of its health. So it's not even, like, the biggest threat. Um, you know, you can still deal with it, uh, but unfortunately it does get to kind of knock something out every single turn now. Yes, yeah, certainly. But having that reduced HP does leave it in a bit of a vulnerable position. Particularly if Astralizon wants to go for another Max Lightning. Now that Electric Train is in effect, that's going to be boosted. But instead, just going straight for that Max Darkness here. Going to go into that chance he does a smidge of damage. But I think the more crucial thing here is to get those special defense drops so that later on in the game, you can actually deal more damage to this Chansey. Chansey, however, just going for another Life Dew, being a really good supporter Pokemon here to its partner Volcarona. And just making sure that as Volcarona managed to come out of this turn and scathed, it gets a little bit more HP to go into the next turn just as strong. Yeah, and I think you need to just keep wearing down on the Volcarona, right? Keep it low, don't let those life juice rack up and keep going. I think Max Darkness is the right way to go, so if you can find an opportunity to land another special attack, maybe, uh, you know, Adam there thinking, okay, well, I'll land the Max Darkness, drop the special defense, and then hopefully, like, my Air Slash will be able to do it. Um, based on how much it did in the, the previous turn, you know, but the Volcarona, if you leave it alone, it's going to take a knockout every turn and recover more health with life juice. So this game could run away, and I think in the last turn of Gigantamax, Adam definitely needs to, to pull out something you know, pretty big with this Duraludon, because otherwise it's going to be almost wasted uh, as his, his Dynamax for the game. Well, I'll try and go for an extreme speed here. It doesn't pick up the KO, but does a little bit more chip to that Volcarona, which goes for a Max Flare into the Duraludon, boosted up, Take it right down to its focus stash. You can just see how much damage this Volcarona is capable of dealing out. Now, anything going into that Duraludon will pick up the KO later on in the game. Another Max Darkness. I think you're right, Adam. This is how he needs to play to be able to counter against that Chansey. Um, so, putting it now at minus two special defense and picks up the KO against that Volcarona. So, it doesn't have to worry too much about the threat. But the one problem it now gives Adam is it gives Jamie a free switch into another Pokemon he has in the back. And looking at his team, we know he has a huge array a big offensive Pokemon. He doesn't have his Dryers on anymore thanks to the Seismic Toss that picked up the KO. Yeah, and I think that's uh, another cool thing about Chansey, right? You know, it deals with Focus Sashes. It, it's uh -huh. hard to knock out and it deals with Sashes. Um, you know, Jamie's still in a very commanding position. He hasn't even set up Gravity yet. Um, you know, the Electric Train's in play, but it will eventually wear out. So maybe that's kind of a late game thing if, if Adam's able to draw this game out. Um, I like what Adam did there. I think that adaptation to the match darkness on Volcarona was definitely the way to go. The Rillaboom does come in, so the grassy surge, uh, mm -hmm. almost not what you wanted. You kind of wanted to keep the electric terrain because now we've got that nasty gravity sing duo where the gravity goes off. The sing activates the throat spray, which then makes the, the Lapras a, a really big threat. That said, you know, you've got Rillaboom on the field. De definitely one of the better things at, at, at trying to get there. Uh, but Rillaboom showing off on those new moves. Uh, one of my favorites, Crusty <laughs> Glide, just does so much damage. Yeah, boosted up by the terrain and also gets to be priority thanks to the terrain as well. Um, Lapras manages to go down before it's able to sing a song thanks to the double up there from Arcanine and Rillaboom. Chansey will set up the gravity. Um, both of the Pokemon on Adam's side are physical attackers, um, not special attackers, so they're not going to be able to reap the benefits of those special defense boosts. Um, drops even that Chansey took previously. Um, but now with Drakazolt coming in as well. So Drakazolt, well known for running the Hustle ability, which as you all know as a Durant loser, Adam, is um, not the most reliable when it comes to accuracy. So gravity could really help out Drakazolt here. 
yeah, I mean, it, it's always one of those things, right, where what, you need a way around the hustle. And that's something that a lot of people, uh, you know, think about with, with Dynamaxing a hustle user or, or trying to find a way to, like, boost its accuracy up a little bit. You know, that said, once you get gravity in play, this is something that hasn't been talked about that much, uh, it, it kind of deals with that as well. Going back to the previous turn, though, I really like what Adam did, just realizing the threat is actually not the Chansey, and you just need to deal with it the, you know, the other way around. Uh, mm -hmm. This Drake is all taking hits pretty comfortably, though, uh, and Drake is all revealing Fire Fang. Yeah, it's gonna, that's Ooh. gonna do a lot. Uh. Yeah, boosted up by the sun as well. Super powerful going into that Rillaboom. Um, leaving Arcanine here to face down against his Pokemon. Chansey going for the Seismic Tops, throwing Arcanine up, and it does a decent chunk of damage. So Chansey is now in a position where if it doesn't want to go to Sing, it can just keep dealing away damage at Arcanine without Arcanine being able to deal a lot back in return, particularly as it's facing down against two Pokemon, and it looks like Arcanine can only reliably target one. Yeah, I mean, I think Adam played, played game two a, a whole lot better. Um, you know, really kind of pushing the limit a little bit more. Targeting down that that their Lapras in that previous turn, I, I really enjoyed too. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the end, you know, Jamie's got kind of enough enough oomph to to push through that turn and, and really puts on, you know, a clinic in alternative strategies. Gravity Sing is not something we've seen mm -hmm. and he shows off exactly how powerful it can be. Yeah, exactly. It was quite nice as well seeing Chauncey not go for his usual kind of stall tactics it was actually being used in a slightly different way by enabling the partner pokemon to hit their moves and go for sing so you were still having that kind of sleep strategy but there were actually a lot of heavy hitters being partnered with it so that the game was able to move forward jamie was able to apply a lot of pressure particularly with the diverse types that he had on his team he always seemed to have an answer for everything and i feel like being able to control the ball position the way he did and always enable that you're able to pick up some super effective damage and worst case, let's get the sun up and deal some big fire type attacks really helped him power through that set. Yeah, I know a lot of people talked a lot when, when it became illegal with C Series 5 about Volcarona and Volcarona has been, uh, how do I put it politely, a problem uh, in previous mm -hmm. previous kind of formats, uh, particularly when it, it's free to Quiver Dance and there, there's so many options on, on how to how to quiver dance and how to set mm -hmm. that up safely. So I think he did a really good job of, of playing around that. Um, and, uh, you know, alternative strategies work for Jamie. We've just seen it go off in a, a very comfortable 2-0. Yeah, exactly. I think something you said as well between game one and two was really interesting, how there aren't as many big physical fighting type Pokemon at the moment. You know, we had a lot of Conkelda previously, but I think with the introduction of the new moves since Isle of Armour, where you've got a lot of this kind of psychic spam that's going around as well with um, sort of expanding force, has meant a lot of the fighting type Pokemon have kind of hidden away at the moment because they're just not the best Pokemon to throw down against something like Ndidi and Hatterene. Um, so it now gives... Pokemon like Chansey the opportunity to come out. It's a little bit safer for them to climb out of their Pokeballs. Um, and I feel like Jamie was able to capitalize on that kind of change since we entered in Series 5. Yeah, and I think playing tournaments like this, playing at home, playing as much as you can, learning new formats is always, always exciting. Uh, I feel like this is one of the biggest format shifts we've had. Uh, we're kind of mirroring our friends in the trading card game, right? Where they get new <laughs> sets, we get new series. Yeah, new stuff true. <laughs> so yeah, it's been fun. And, and obviously there's more to watch today. Yeah, 100%. So we're going to cut to a 